Hey, welcome back. In this video, I am just going over one more example on how to, uh, to locate Xeroforce members in trusses. So if you recall, I did make another tutorial on uh, the method that I use and, uh, and explain how to find Xeroforce members in trusses. If you want to watch that, if you haven't seen it yet, click this bubble up here and it will take you to that video. Otherwise, let's go through and solve this. So we have a truss. It's simply supported. Uh, under a certain loading condition. It's important to note that uh, if the loading changes, then the zero force members will change as well. Um, so when we're identifying zero force members, it's only for this specific loading condition. Okay, so in this video, or I mean on this truss up here, this diagram, I'm going to circle the zero force members that I find. And on this truss down here, I'm actually just going to erase them because it's going to help me visualize which members of this truss actually have some internal force in them. Okay, so the way that we do this, if you recall from that other tutorial, is we go joint by joint and we just look to see if, uh, if a joint would be in equilibrium if, uh, you know, depending on if the, the members connected at that joint have forces in them. All right, so looking at this, uh, at this joint down here, this is going to be an easy one to pick on. If there is, let's say, some tension uh, in this member, then there would have to be equal and opposite tension in this member to satisfy the equilibrium in the x direction, because in a truss we say that the, the members can't provide any lateral uh, uh, support, so this guy wouldn't be providing anything. It's only able to provide a force, uh, internal force, that's in line with this axis. So if there was a tension, uh, it would be equal and opposite tension in these two collinear members, and this third member that's attached to this joint, let's say there was some force in here, let's say there's some compression. Um, for this joint to be in static equilibrium, there would have to be that equal and opposite force pushing against that compression on this joint, but we don't have that. So if there was compression here, this joint would have the tendency to move downwards. If it was tension, uh, this, uh, this force, uh, sorry, this joint would have the tendency to move upwards. Um, the only way that we can get that to be in static equilibrium is if there's no force in that member. So this has to be a zero force member. All right, so we're going to erase that. And if you did watch that other tutorial that I made, uh, that is one of the conditions that we look for um, when we're, we look for situations where we have a joint with three members, with two of them being collinear, and the third one is always going to be uh, a zero force member as long as there's no point force or there's no, no force acting directly on that joint. So another easy one that we can pick out is right here. We have two collinear forces. So the, the forces in these members are going to be equal and opposite from each other. And this guy, if there was a force in here, there's nothing to balance it out. So it would induce uh, movement. And because the stress is in static equilibrium, we know that there is no movement, which means that has to be also a zero force member. So I'll just come down here and erase it. And you'll see for the next one that we look at that having this erased diagram will also just kind of help us out. Because when we look at this joint, if we count the number of members attached to it, it's one, two, three, four. Uh, we don't have a statement that says we can just look at a joint with four members and immediately determine whether or not some of them are zero force members. But by erasing this one, it's sort of like it's not there under this current loading situation because it's not applying any in the you know in the context of like a free body diagram or something. It's not actually applying any force, so it might as well not be at the joint. Um, so then when we look at it, we would have two collinear forces um, if there's internal forces in these members and this member it has if there was a force in this member that force would have some component that is actually perpendicular to the to the this uh, line of action that these forces would cause and uh, that just means that they're actually it has to that value has to be zero so if some component of this force is zero um, then this whole force is zero so there we go, that one has to be a zero force member again, right? Because there's two collinears, one, one odd man out. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase that. And it's not like these, these members aren't there. It's just, you know, again, for the analogy of drawing a free body diagram or something, for that particle equilibrium at that, at that joint, there wouldn't be a force showing up. So that's just what I'm trying to sort of, sort of highlight here. Um, when we look at this joint, uh, again, if there's one, two, three, four, five, it's not very clear that these would all be zero force members, but by the time that we just have erased the zero force members, um, the only thing that's left that could potentially hold internal forces is these two collinear members plus this third one. So again, this one has to get knocked out as a zero force member as well. All right, so there we go. Everything actually inside this sort of larger triangle is a zero force member under this current loading. 
um, which basically at the end of the day, when we were when we go and solve it, it just the more zero force members we have, the easier the problem gets because we have this. We can easily find the the reaction. There's going to be a vertical reaction here and a vertical reaction there, uh, and there's actually significantly less joints that we'll actually have to provide an analysis on to uh, to get all the internal forces at the end of the day. Um, looking at this member here again, we have two collinears. One that's not collinear, it's got to be a zero force member. Otherwise, if it's not this joint would have the tendency to move up or down. So we're going we're gonna to get rid of that guy as well. All right, what else can we get rid of? Um, let's look at this joint. This one, two collinears, a third one, not collinear. It's got to be zero force member. Otherwise, that joint would be out of equilibrium if there's any compression or tension pushing or pulling in that direction, right? Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. Um, if we look at this joint, this is just the first joint that we've looked at in this problem that has an applied load on it. And when we have an applied load on a joint, we can't immediately just say something is a zero force member because now some component of this force, you know, is acting perpendicular to these two other guys. And so it's, uh, it's, it's not very straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to come back to this. We'll just not worry about it right now. Let's look at something else. How about we look at this joint? Well, two collinear members, a third one has to be zero force member. Now, we couldn't have determined that this one was a zero force member by looking at uh, the other joint, but by looking at the joint that didn't have the point force, we're able to do that. All right, and I think I see one more zero force member in here. Again, if we're looking at this diagram, it's cluttered, it's hard to see, but knowing that, you know, if we drew the free body diagram for this joint, uh, there would be an internal force here, two collinear forces, so they would be canceling each other out. This one would not be aligned with them, so this one has to be a zero force member as well. Okay, so there we go. So that guy's gotta be a zero force member. Um, so what we've done actually, we've identified all of the zero force members. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's crazy, there's eight zero force members in this diagram. Um, what I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna stop it there, and in the next video, we're gonna use the same truss, but I'm just going to add a different loading scenario and we'll see that it won't have exactly the same zero force members. Uh, so I'll see you guys there.